All right, hi again, uh, Mike Mazzalongo, BibleTalk.tv. We're uh, into lesson number eight of our small group series entitled, How to Love Someone uh, That You Hate. And uh, today's uh, lesson is entitled, Make Room, Make Room for God. So let's, uh, as we do every session, let's review once again our action plan for learning to love those that we hate very quickly. Uh, we begin with our mouths, right? Uh, bless and not curse. Number two, walk a mile in their shoes. Try to understand the motivation, the thinking, the reasons behind the actions that our enemy or the person that we dislike uh, is coming from. Never, never take revenge. Revenge is mine, saith the Lord. Number four, plan something beautiful for your enemy uh, in the sight of all. Number five, Try not to win the war or win the argument, rather make your attempts and your efforts um, in line with winning the peace, to win the peace between the two of you. All right, so today we move on to the uh, second last step in the, the process, step number six. So uh, one of the feelings we have when we are crossways with someone for whatever reason is, is a feeling of helplessness. Um, it's the cause of much of uh, the anger and frustration that we have at time. Um, we're not in control of the situation many times. You know, we, we're, we're gnashing our teeth, we're angry, we're frustrated, but it seems that you know, we can't control what's happening. And so that creates a lot of angst in us. Um, maybe you're trying, uh, you're making the effort, maybe you're lying awake at night, you know, thinking things through, maybe you're, uh, you're even taking a class at church uh, like this one to help you uh, uh, deal with your enemy. And, and the maddening fact is sometimes the person who's offended or hurt you is not making any effort whatsoever. You know, it's all on you. You not only have been the individual who has been harmed or hurt in some way, but you're also the individual that's trying to make an effort to kind of uh, you know, win the peace. You're trying to win over the individual that harmed you uh, with love. Well, as Christians, you know, it's just part of, the, part of our lifestyle, if you wish, because as Christians, we want to resolve. Uh, we feel badly if we hate someone. Uh, we want uh, peace and, and love. And many times uh, what happens is the other person may not want to cooperate with this. Uh, they may not care or they, they even may be oblivious. You ever, you ever have that situation? Someone hurts or offends you and they're, they're going on blithely as if nothing has happened. Uh, good morning, what a wonderful day. And they don't realize that you're suffering uh, on the inside. All these situations tend to create a, a lot of stress uh, in the individual. Now, this common feeling of helplessness and frustration uh, brings us to the sixth step in the process of loving our enemies. And the sixth step is make room for God. Make room for God. As Paul says in Romans 12, 19b, leave room for the wrath of God. You know, much of our frustration and uh, helplessness problems usually stem from the fact that we have tried to solve or deal with the problem or deal with the person in our own way and with our own strength and by ourselves. Paul says uh, that um, in a negotiation for peace with an enemy, you must make room for God. In other words, you have to bring God uh, into the bargain. You have to bring him uh, to the bargaining table, if you wish. Uh, many times our failure to make things work out is simply a sign from God to you know, move over and allow Him to work. Many times we, we, you know, we, we put all this effort in, all this emotional effort into resolving an issue without any reference, to, uh, without any reference or prayer to God. Uh, or if you've asked God into it, then you need to let Him do His work by obeying the part that He wants you to do, whatever that may be. So there are several reasons why making room for God really does make a difference uh, in the uh, effort that you are making to love your enemy. Uh, difference number one, God judges perfectly. God judges perfectly. Regardless of our best intentions, we never know the motives and the details of a person's life. I mean, even if you know, the best we can, 
usually doesn't give us enough information uh, to, to, uh, to make a judgment call on someone else. But God does, God knows all the hearts of every individual and he knows the heart of our enemy. Um, you don't know what your enemy deserves. You, know, you, you might judge too harshly or you might judge too softly, but God's judgment is true and fair and just and righteous. There is peace that comes when we turn over the judging to God and it'll be a sure uh, judgment and it'll be a fair judgment. Um, make room for God, reason number two, because God cares perfectly. Inasmuch as God cares for your enemy in providing a sure and fair judgment, God also cares for you. God cares that you are hurt and angry and frustrated and He wants to minister to you if you will allow Him to do so. He wants to be included because He cares for you. He cares for your enemy, but He also cares for you. The worst result of a conflict is that your hatred of your enemy eventually draws you away from God, the God who cares for you. And making room for God is necessary because God heals perfectly. God has many names uh, in the Bible. Uh, the people of the Old Testament referred to Him in many different ways, indicating the many facets of His character and His power. One name used for Him in Exodus chapter 15, verses 25 to 26, was Yahweh Rapha, Yahweh Rapha, which means the Lord who heals. God is the Lord who heals broken bodies and broken spirits and even broken relationships. Does it take any less faith to believe that God can as easily heal your broken relationship as heal the blind man? You know, the, the God who heals the blind man, can he not heal a broken relationship? The author of um, the resource book that I'm uh, using for this series, Milton Jones, he says that when a relationship is broken, it is more than just a relationship that is broken. It is part of you that is broken as well. Before healing the relationship, God must first heal you, and He can. If you can be healed, there's a good chance that the relationship can be healed as well. If the relationship doesn't respond to God's touch, then at least you walk away as a whole person. When you uh, allow God into the relationship, uh, you need to feel confident that God will judge righteously and rightly, that He will take the burden upon Himself, and that He'll heal you and together with you minister the good that you're trying to offer to your enemy. The best case scenario is that there will be peace between you and your enemy, the person you dislike, the person you hate, uh, the worst case scenario will be that there will be peace between uh, you and yourself and you and God, even if there isn't peace between you and your enemy. If your enemy uh, refuses any type of uh, uh, outreach, any type of reconciliation that you may, you may offer. Once you've tamed your tongue and tried to understand, once you have resisted revenge and planned to do good, once you've aimed at peace, bring the Lord into the battle in order uh, to make the attempt to love your enemy. Uh, you can't succeed at that. You cannot succeed at that without bringing the Lord into uh, the equation. Okay, so that's our uh, short uh, lesson for this uh, session. I've got some questions now that you can use for your small group discussion. We'll see you next time for the last lesson in the series. Question number one. Summarize your feelings about your enemy in one word only, then elaborate on that one word. Each person in the group should share in turn. Question number two. If you were permitted to judge your antagonist, what would the judgment and punishment be? Question number three. How has God dealt with a specific failure in your life? Question number four, what form will making room for God take in your situation?